Greetings, Guardians, and welcome to the Voice of the Vanguard. Today we, I have with me Sully from Sully Games. Say hello, Sully. Hello, Guardians. And today we are going to have a TWAB heavy episode because uh, of the massive changes that are happening. Yes, a lot of changes. A lot of the, changes I've kind of predicted in the, the past, so. But uh, <laughs> first, let's start with uh, what we've been doing. I'll, I'll start first just so I won't forget. But uh, <laughs> 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 typical, right? Um, right. <clears throat> yeah. So me and the manager did so a bunch of a whole bunch of doubles, uh, crimson duos over the week weekend. And I told you I was gonna run that mind benders and Antius wards, and I did, and it was a hell of a lot of fun. I'm sure it was. I was just shotgun Russian people. I've like I've never done that before. You know me. Every time I play with you, I'm just like, fuck shotguns. Which I don't uh, know how much you read of the Twa, but you'll be happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I had a lot of fun running shotguns and anti wards. Uh, there was moments when I was sliding towards people. There was the sickest moment. I have it up on my YouTube channel. You could go check it out. Gameplay stuff. Uh, was when I slid at, I think it was two hunters. I can't remember. But a hunter and his friend. The hunter threw his throwing knife at me. I, uh... <laughs> so I shotgun him, and the throwing knife bounced off of me and killed his friend. And it was amazing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was the sickest I'll play to... I've ever made in Crucible. I'll have to go and, like, look at him. Yeah, it was great. Um, yeah, that's mostly what I did over the weekend was do that. I finally got my Luna's Howl. Uh, that's great. Yes. yes I, was... I was really happy. I was there with you. Well, I was in like comp with you, but yeah, I was... uh, yeah, I was really happy about that. Uh, now I have to work on the uh, not forgotten, I guess. Yeah. Um. Yes, also, yes, like, yeah. I was checking out Destiny Tracker just to like take a look at the like the comp matches I had, and they were always completely uneven. It was always like a seventy percent chance I'd lose or fail. It was very very rare where I would get yeah, 50 or I rem- fifty one. I remember you saying that. I remember looking mine up. I had like a few of them that were like pretty bad, but most of mine were like pretty even. Okay. So. Well, I was checking. I also checked a couple of our other friends as well, and th- theirs was always like they had eighty or ninety percent chance of winning. I was really? like, wow, like that's insane. Uh, I also checked all of your ELO ratings, and I'm in bronze. So no wonder when I play with you guys, I get wiped. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all like silver or gold. <laughs> Where is that in Destiny Tracker, by the way? Uh, it's under um, I think it's survival. Oh, you're talking about in survival, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what am I? Yeah, see, I'm well, bronze in survival. Yeah, you're a bronze. Survival. Yeah. So, but I'd never uh, play comp. Yeah. <laughs> um. But also we had I I was also just solo matchmaking and I match made with uh, Demandred, and we were on each other's team. Oh nice! <laughs> oh yeah, I remember cool. that was it was actually the night I think you got Ludos. Yeah, it was. Yeah, <clears throat> okay. that was really fun. <laughs> uh, nice surprise. We ended up winning that match pretty single handedly. Uh, I think that's about it. Other than a couple of raids here and there to help you guys out, uh, that's pretty much it. How about you? Uh, a lot of raids. Just been kind of raiding with the clan, doing some molds, doing some garden still. Uh, my warlock, and I don't remember if my hunter at the time was at the last podcast, but both my hunter and my warlock are both at 970 with pinnacles. And my titan just needs, I believe, just a chess piece. It's at like nine sixty nine right now, so nice. that should be. I should have all three characters at full pinnacle, which was one of my goals. Now I think I, probably a big focus will be um, finishing out some of the exotic quest lines I have on my warlock. Um, but other than that, yeah, I played a decent amount of doubles. I did not enjoy doubles whatsoever. I got. I think, I mean, doubles is a cool, like, game mode, but they have some changes that I think they need to make to it. Like, there shouldn't be, like, the, uh, 
the buff to like regen your grenade because I don't know how many teams I ran into with double warlock with handheld supernova. Like that stuff was whew, that was some boring, boring shit. Uh, but yeah, other than that, man, just been raiding a lot. Yeah, I did really well at doubles, but I think I only ever played that with uh, with people. I didn't go yeah. in solo. I, didn't solo I did people. that. A, I did that a few times. I went in solo. So, and the one time I went in with Quam, and he had some internet issues, so he got kicked. I think from at least one or two of our games. Um, what else? Yeah, I think I like doubles more just because there's two people, and so I don't have to worry about two people. <laughs> oh, it, the issue wasn't, like, I feel like doubles would be fine, but, like, it was just the recharge rate on, you know, your abilities I was not really a fan of. <laughs> well, it's already been broken. Like, the, the Sandal Supernova's already been broken for a long time. Yeah. So. <clears throat> um, let me see here. Uh, so... I guess unless you have anything else to say, we'll talk not, about... Not really. We'll talk about the cutscene then? Yes, finally. We got some... Kind of a teaser to go into Season 10. So... That was... Exci- I was not expecting to have some type of trailer whatsoever. And it was short, but I felt like that was one of their better trailers that we've had for a while, in my opinion. Yeah, it was fairly short, but uh, it had a lot of um, meaning to it. It did. It did. <laughs> uh, so essentially what happens is uh, we load up uh, where Rasputin is, and through the doors comes uh, the Osiris. warlock guy, Osiris. The warlock? How, dude, <laughs> how do you disrespect the greatest warlock to live? Is this no, the Osiris? My mind. mind is broken. Uh... <laughs> Osiris, uh, so Osiris comes through the door and he basically says, uh, it's, it's white or black. Like you have to pick a side, uh, and you betrayed, like black. basically you betrayed us and now I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, something uh, if you're, uh, with the light or the darkness, Yeah, which kind of like <clears throat> kind of builds speculation up because obviously we kind of know, I mean, Bungie themselves has mentioned that Destiny is now officially an MMO. Do you think they're trying to set up potentially a light and dark side? Kind of something similar to, like, WoW does? With... Like, we've talked about this before in the past, and I say I hope they do, but I don't see them doing it. Like, I, this is probably going to have, this. like, the next season is probably going to have, like, the thing that they had with last year with uh, the Drifter, the Drifter. And Vanguard. Yeah. And you have to pick a side, either Rasputin or Cyrus. Oh, that's such a weird thing to say. <laughs> uh, yeah, one or the other. And I don't think it's going to have any real significance to it. I think it's just going to be rewards based. Because, I mean, we've still have yet to even notice anything significant with siding with the Drifter other than in the season like there hasn't been any you know effect long term with you know choosing either the vanguard or the drifter so yeah um yeah i'm kind of right there i wouldn't hold my breath for any like significance to have come from this yeah i'm kind of right there with you um with that i mean it'd be really cool if they had like got to choose your sides i think i could see them kind of like testing this out, like, kind of, like, playing with it type deal. Like, maybe it's, like, a seasonal thing and, like, kind of just see how, like, the community reacts and kind of, like, be, like, something would this actually work in Bungie, like, in Destiny. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I don't, like, in terms of, like, on how, like, choosing, like, light and darkness, like, I feel like the restructure for like yeah i think that would be something that we would have to see in destiny 3 in my opinion because yeah. just how the sandbox is now like that just wasn't built i just feel like it would be so complex to like 
where you change everything that's current in the game. Yeah, I think they would have to like rebuild their engine or something. Just, like, um, or just their developer tools. I don't think they have the capability for it. Uh, agreed. So, like, I, I could see this being some type of like test. Um, I'm curious to see on who you're who you're gonna choose. You gonna go with Rasputin or are you going with Osiris? Well, I mean, I have three characters, so I could go with both. Okay, but... your, your main character, like. I don't know, probably Osiris, because he's a person. Atta boy, atta boy. <laughs> he's not a machine. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a machine. Uh, no, Res- like, um, I don't know anything about Rasputin other than he's just a fucking, like, war mind, and he gave me a spear one time to kill a what time worm god. That? That's it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I actually know about Osiris, and, like, his... There's actually some like pretty cool lore on Rasputin, but yeah, I just haven't read it or I don't know too much other than uh, he was programmed to save humanity, and that might have involved him mi- th- killing or like damaging the Traveler at one point. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he had I think more of a significance in D1 that he has in D2, other than he did actually get like a full blown like. <laughs> DLC. Well, they, they whole rec- they retconned the whole thing, right? Because yeah. they had a whole lot m- more more minds now that it's just the one, right? Uh, he has like multiple like areas. Yeah, yeah. So, but I guess supposedly Mars is his like official. That's his home. home. Yeah. <laughs> and then he has a bunch of just AIs throughout. Supposedly, I don't know. That's yeah. something that I guess I would have to look into the most interesting about him is that uh you don't know if he's if he's damaging if he's on the side of the traveler in the light or not because he's supposed to be on the side of humanity and if that means killing off humanity for like 90 percent to save 10 percent, he'll do it so yeah well maybe we'll get some more info on him um yeah but definitely i was not expecting that trailer and i was like oh damn like that was a pretty good like trailer to kind of get us excited for next season uh a lot of potentially stuff i also kind of predicted we would be getting some new information in this week's twab about some next season stuff uh didn't really expect the whole fucking like patch notes type thing Pretty much like 80 percent of this twab is patch notes <laughs> I was expecting, like, some type of, like, time frame for, like, a potential, like, stream reveal, like they did for last season, but, yeah, they, they kind of went all well, out on this have, twab. They still have another week, right? They do. Yeah, they do, and I think we'll get, like, a date for it, but, like, I was not ex- I mean, this twab is, this is one of the better twabs they've had in... in a long time. Granted, there's probably a lot of people upset with some of the changes, but... But there's definitely a lot of a lot of information. Uh, what was it? I was thinking. Of? Oh yeah, so the so my my idea my thinking is that we're probably gonna have a hive related thing because it's on Mars. I don't know. That's fine. Potentially. Idea. Yeah. Potentially. Um. All right, twab. So this week at Bungie, Bungie, all eyes are on stage seven. Uh, so yeah, we've hit stage six, which was six billion fractaline. Now we have to reach nine billion seven hundred seventy-seven million seven hundred seventy-seven thousand seven hundred. I, I knew there would be sevens in there somewhere. Seven sevens. I, mean, I figured there would be seven billion, but like, nah, it's not. Yeah, but like since we were like do I think that was probably what their hopes was to have seven billion like sevens across the board, but since we've been just investing and destroying it and Yeah, stocks are looking real good right now. <laughs> the stonks. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, that's like my favorite thing out of this is all the memes. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um Yeah, so everyone's saying now is the time to donate. Uh, like, all the content creators and Bungie, even them, are, like, their official Twitter account was, like, donate. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of funny. Uh, so it says here, so they have a graph, it looks pretty, pretty, 
Like a graph. <laughs> <laughs> they got a graph here. It looks, looks kind of like a graph. What? It's a graph. No shit. <laughs> what else did you expect? Uh, you see the exponential growth in investments and uh, donations. Uh, yes. So, when you've been donating or investing, this has been a community wide effort from the get go. Uh, combined efforts are paving the way to success. Soon, the final triumph for the Savior title and the Fancy Noob Shader will be available to everyone. It's all thanks to you. Um, so, let's shift gears back to promised uh, some sandbox previews for the upcoming season of the Redacted. Uh, let's get to it. So this week, we're putting uh, the magnifying glass on weapons while swords were giving a bit of an overhaul in functionality. Other weapon archetypes are seeing some finer tuning. Uh, damage values, ranges, and even reload canceling are on the table this time around. We know one of the first questions on your mind will be, is this a Crucible-centric update? Or will PvE get changes this season as well? Uh, while the following changes will be coming out at the beginning of the season redacted, some are in preparation for a new PvE challenge coming later in the season. A new Nightfall difficulty, officially dubbed Grandmaster, uh, will test even the most proficient Guardians. Uh, we'll have more inf uh, more details about this new ordeal in the coming weeks. But for now, we have information from the dev team on changes being made to ensure that we strike the right balance between challenge and reward. Now, I'm going to ask you, do you think... I mean, we kind of talked about this a little bit off before we went live and recorded. But do you think the uh, <laughs> PvE challenge is going to be Raid? Prison of Elders? Similar to, like, Prison of Elders or, mm -hmm. like, Sundial-type activity. I'll say Sundial, because that's their MO. You think so? <sighs> I'm not expecting a whole lot, man. Like, I'm not expecting a big change with this thing. I'm Almost. expecting another Menagerie or Sundial type event. I'm going to say, like, a Prison of Elders activity. I hope it would be something like that. I think we're going to get a PV endgame, but we'll see. All right, let's go on. Uh, so, New Nightfall, what do you think the uh, power level for this is going to be? <laughs> so... We have 90 right now, so like, what, 90. 1,000? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Because um, we'll probably get a bump of 10 power, would be my guess. Hopefully, I mean, it would be kind of cooler if it went higher, if it was plus 20. Um, but my guess would be, probably be a plus 10, which then we'll put pinnacles at 980. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I could see a 1,000. For sure. Sure. Uh, da, 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 da. So dev team for season of Redacted. We've adjusted quite a few weapon archetypes alongside the changes. The swords that were announced two weeks ago, while these are not all the changes in the release, uh, we're covering some important conversation pieces here. So first up on the chop and block is uh, is Anagi's burden. <laughs> Since the removal of auto reload effects from Rally Barricade and Luna Faction Boots, as well as the in the, uh, introduction of the Catalyst, uh, it's seen a significant uptick in use. Uh, Izanagi's burden solidified itself within the majority of endgame builds due to its excellent burst damage, sustained damage, ammo, ammo economy due to special ammo, and safety. <laughs> Ammo and safety due to being a sniper rifle. Oh, okay. Uh, the outlaw trait is now swapped out for no distractions to be more in line with the fantasy of the weapon and to ensure the trait on the weapon would still work with Honed Edge. The animation speed of the Honed Edge is no longer affected by the reload stat. Uh, an outlaw has been replaced with no distractions. Not really surprised about this change. I've been kind of saying as an Aggies so who's going to get nerfed I would say shortly after probably Shadowkeep dropped just because like literally like that's what you run a other I mean unless you don't have Izanagi's but if you have Izanagi's that's like literally what you do DPS with so, and it yeah go, go ahead finish your uh, typically they do like to kind of like figure out what the community is always using 
and find ways to like make the community to use different to find a different play style. Like definitely okay. in our Okay, oh, go on, go on. Okay, I just have something I just want to say. So this change, uh, I'm I'm not too down with because most of the time when you use an Izanagi, you're standing in a well, or you have a Titan that has a bubble and a rally barricade. So like that gives you your reload perk. Yeah. Uh, if you're using it for other things, yeah, it's a bit of a bummer. But at least your aim isn't going to get knocked all over the place, uh, which I had issues with sometimes. Um, but this is a big one. So sniper rifles in general. Uh, we gave sniper rifles an increase in PVE damage back in Shadowkeep. We're now removing that change for a few reasons. Sniper rifles have a lot of utility and safety due to their range, and the increased damage was giving them too much of a leg up uh, on their closer range counterparts. Their golf only widens as the difficulty of any given encounter goes up. The direct changes to adaptive and rapid fire snipers were to make the differences in sub archetypes more impactful again, as well as to give some amount of parity with the adjustments to shotguns and fusion rifles. So damage to major enemies and above have now been reduced to pre shatter keep values to minus 20%. Uh, so like a minus 20% uh, debuff or nerf rather. Uh, adaptive snipers precision multiplier has been reduced from 3.25 to 2.95. And Rapid Sniper's base impact has been reduced from 100 damage to 90 damage. So that's that's a big rip. Um, so Izanagi's probably does what? Does it do like 92,000 in a while? 97? Just, I'm, I'm trying to figure out for on the Garden boss. Um, do you remember uh, how much damage? All like the buffs and stuff? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember. But I do about like thirty thousand to the Cyclops, and then fifty thousand okay. after that. Okay. Uh, so don't worry, you'll still use be able, be able to use grenade launchers. Oh wait, uh, grenade <laughs> launchers. Uh, through a combination of archetype adjustments and new perks being introduced, grenade launchers have now been uh, been quite powerful ever since the season of Drifter. It changed the aggression frame sub archetype to rapid fire frame arc uh, archetype to be more in line with other weapons established conventions and slightly reduced their effectiveness on powerful enemies to give other weapons some more breathing room uh so yeah aggression frame grenade launchers now rapid fire frame grenade launchers uh the rapid fire frame grenade launchers have had their damage reduced to account for their rate of fire, but now have increased reserves. I don't know. Uh, previously aggressive <laughs> frame grenade launchers fired faster than adaptive, but had the same damage. Uh, damage to major enemies and above by power weapon grenade launchers reduced by about 10%. Yeah. Um... Now, because we also talked about this, like, potentially, I mean, maybe rocket launchers comes in and we actually see life to rocket launchers in the next season. Maybe they make some nice changes to them. Um, yeah, we've been talking about maybe, rocket launchers for a little while here now. And maybe linear fusion rifles make a return? Maybe. To be maybe. the meta? Like, I mean, Sleeper Simulate used to be one of the best heavy weapons in the game yeah. for PvE damage and nobody uses it. Uh what was it? is it Crooked Fang? No Crooked Tarantula. Fang is another or yeah, Tarantula was my Tranch, favorite. Yeah, I and I had a really good tarantula that was yeah. beastly. So maybe linear fusion rifles come by and they <laughs> take these things. Cause, I mean obviously the community's oh. seen a lot of these nurse. They're kind of like upset. Uh, right now, I would advise you guys to get uh, a firing line um, in your fission, fusion rifle. Uh, you can get those by just donating. It's one of the time loss bounties. Okay. Uh, get one of those with the firing line. Uh, that way you can get a buff with it. Um, in case that ends up being the new meta. So. That's a good idea. I might do that tonight. <laughs> 
Yeah, if you're donating, you might as well, right? Yes. Uh, so yeah, that that's that for grenade launchers. Uh, Lord of Wolves. Uh, ease of use granted by changes to release the wolves made it very difficult to approach. It made the margin of error extremely large. We pushed two states apart via accuracy to ensure that difficult state is the norm rather than the exception. With this change, release the wolves would be used at extremely close ranges against large targets instead of just being a better version of the default behavior. So release the wolves now significantly reduces the weapon's accuracy while active. So that'll be good for PvP. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing how much this really affects Lord of Wolves, but I feel like at least they're addressing it because that was definitely. We'll see how much broken. of an accuracy hit this will take. I- I'm not yeah. sure about that. That's where I was just kind of. I would have rather seen, I think, getting a kill, like kind of back to the previous. I think it was like the OG right. Lord of Wolves. You had to get right. the kill to be able to activate. Yeah. Um release the wolves i would have rather i think seen that we'll see on how the accuracy change That's is my fault. what uh no never mind um all right what else Shh. so the last word uh when reintroduced in season of the forge the last word became quite dominant due to an extremely forgiving maximum time to kill uh, we're adjusting the way the weapon works to focus it back as hip fire based weapon while also improving that side of the experience for both controller and mouse and keyboard inputs. Uh, we also made it a little less forgiving so that you still have to concentrate on your aim while wielding the weapon. Uh, so fan fire now adjusts the precision scaler while hip firing. Uh, this means that the fan fire impact values have been adjusted. Uh, precision hip and ADS has been adjusted from 67.95 for both to 68.27 for hip fire and ADS for 52.2. Uh, and that has to be precision. Non precision hip uh, went from 50.01 to 38, and same with uh, non precision ADS. Uh, so aiming down sights no longer provides additional effective range, uh, damage fall off, uh, reduce the stability for mouse and keyboard input, reduce the effective range to improve the experience adjusted the way target acquisition is handled while hip firing. So it's still going to be viable, but you need to really hit those hip fire kills. Yeah, I think that's what, I mean, realistically, that's what that gun is for. Like, it's a hip fire gun. Yeah. But I, I was kind of uh, going back to, like, the starting paragraph to this. The last word becoming quite dominant. I I really don't get killed by that gun a whole lot, PvP. No, you don't? Uh-uh. No. I do. I mean, I get killed by it, like, but, like, in terms of, like, Hand cannons, like spare rations, kills me more. Um, I would even say, like, the old fashioned kills me more than the last one. I I have not seen an old fashioned in Crucible. (laughs) Really? No. Yeah, like, I hardly ever get killed by the last word. It's always like last word, Lord of Wolves, or something like that. Uh, Or the, uh, the Vanguard hand cannon, that kills me a lot too. Um, I've never, oh yeah, again, I haven't been killed by that. Really? Well, I guess you don't <laughs> least, play, I, mean, I play it more a lot. Yeah, I play in the lower crucible. level tiers, so. so. Well, I'm not going, <laughs> I just play more Crucible, I think, than you, so. Yeah, probably. Uh, so shotguns. One <laughs> issue we've been waiting to fix before adjusting shotguns again was, uh, adjusting shotguns again was an oddity. In the way our aim assist system works with weapons that don't care much about the precision damage. As an example for shotguns at certain distances between players, the aim assist system would prioritize the head, causing the entire spread to deviate from center mass to make the player miss out on the kill. Uh, with that issue out of the way, we made more adjustments to shotguns to give other weapons a little more time to react to them. So target acquisition for non-slug shotguns has been adjusted to no longer account for precision locations. Uh, Previously target acquisition could actually cause the player's spread to deviate from the intended aim vector 
causing more to s- more of the spread to miss. And I actually experienced quite a bit of that while running mm-hmm. shotguns over the weekend. Uh, I would just notice that like the entire radical, like I shot it, it was on the guy, and he it just missed him completely. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that too. The inconsistency with shotguns. Uh, so cone angle is now adjusted on a per sub archetype basis and no longer adjusted by the range stat. So I don't know how that's going to affect. Uh, yeah. I don't know which sub archetype is going to have a better cone than the other. <laughs> right. Uh, Come back to a later podcast to find out. Yeah. Uh, aiming down sights no longer adjusts effective range for this weapon archetype. So it seems like they're getting rid of like the aiming down sights thing, like overall, pretty much. Yeah. For effective Which, range. I mean, I'm cool with. I mean, I hardly ever aim down. I mean, I never use a shotgun to begin with, but like I don't ever really aim down the sights. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, so fusion rifles. Uh, similar to the issue noted above with shotguns, fusion rifles also suffered from some target acquisition related oddities that we've since fixed. Most of the changes here are adjustments focusing on the high impact sub archetype. Uh, backup plan was an exotic perk in the original Destiny release and it was placed on legendary fusion rifles in Destiny 2 due to them being heavy ammo weapons at the time rather than special ammo weapons that they currently are. Uh, when weapons were shuffled around in Forsaken, the perk came along with them, and we decided to adjust it alongside the archetype itself to have it fall back in line with other legendary perks. <laughs> uh, so people are going to be really happy about their Aaron Tilt. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Getting nerfed. Yes. Uh, so let's see here. Target acquisition for fusion rifles has been adjusted to no longer account for precision locations. Uh, previously target acquisition could actually cause the player's volley to deviate from intended aim vector, causing most of the volley to miss. I've, I've noticed that. Uh, I had, I'd never used fusion rifles, so... <laughs> I tried using an air until for a while, it wasn't good at it, and I noticed all my bolts would miss, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck this. Uh, damage fall off for this weapon archetype can now floor at 0.5 times, previously at 0.75 times. Uh... Effective range and impact of the optics stat for this weapon archetype has been reduced across the board. Backup plan now adjusts impact to match rapid fire sub archetype while active. Uh, charge time is now set to match the rapid fire sub archetype. Uh, 0.85 while active. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of changes for things that have been talked about for a while. Yeah. Reversible. Yep. I know a lot of the community has been really complaining about shotguns, which I think will always continue to be an issue for a lot of people. And then obviously, Aaron Till and Crucible is insane. Yeah. Uh, auto rifles. This is the last one for weapon archetypes, I guess. Uh, some small tweaks have been made to give auto rifles a small boost in efficacy. For the Crucible, uh, though they also influence PvE. The nature of the way Destiny is played tends to have semi-auto based weaponry be more effective in general, so we're compensating for that with these tweaks. Uh, These are fairly modest changes intended to give auto rifles more of a chance in an open fight without attempting to drag the TTK TTK of the entire uh, game down. Following impact values have changed for high impact frame, uh, 22 slash 35.2, uh, previously 22 and 33. Uh, precision frame, 1727.2, uh, previously 17 and 25.5. So a little bit more damage for uh, yep. precision overall for each one of these. Uh Adaptive frame, yeah, that's up as well, and same with rapid frame. So you're going to be able to do more damage with an auto rifle. Well, rapid frame dropped. Yeah, it's getting nerfed. It's currently at a 13.4 to a 20.1. Or no, 
Actually, no, I read that wrong. Holy yeah, shit. I was looking at that as well. I was like, did I read that right? No, I think I read that right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that yeah, was actually was getting the that. biggest one. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, actually, let's see. These are some of the biggest changes coming to weapons, but be sure to check out the official patch notes in the early March for the full list. We also have a preview of exotic armor changes along with tuning to your supers and abilities in the coming weeks. So, Interesting. Cross your fingers for a handheld supernova. Yes, please. <laughs> please. Uh, so- and, and the thing with handheld supernova, like I'll talk, about, like I don't necessarily get upset with it that it's like a one-hit kill thing. But for how long they can hold the charge, and I don't like if you get somebody that's like fairly good, like their mobility is doesn't even get affected. They're still flying around with handheld supernova and it also kind of has like a tracking to it in a way and yeah i've been able to kill people that have gone past doors and stuff yeah like <clears throat> so maybe like l- lower the tracking down on it and slower mobility when holding handheld supernova and i feel like it would be in a good spot i could be wrong but that's what i think i would make the changes to start out with and go from there. Yeah. Uh, but so, I will say, honestly, well, we have questions after this, but mm-hmm. I feel like the changes to ARs could be nice. I, I never really use ARs. I don't know if you're an AR type guy. Oh, I don't know if you saw, but my PvP and PvE was mostly ARs. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, obviously, you are you could be loving that a whole lot. So, and I feel like... Those are fairly nice changes. I have ARs. a pretty good Reckless Oracle that I like quite a bit, but it just recently I've just not been using it because it's not as good as some of the other stuff. Okay. And so and, I'm happy um, I might bring out another this my Reckless Oracle and shred with it again. So I'm happy to see at least on the first TWAB of the upcoming season, Pulse Rifles were not touched. So hopefully <laughs> my sacred is safe. Your sacred is safe. It's still and I can sacred. Take, I, <laughs> because I never get killed by that fucking. If I do, like, I praise that. I, I don't have an issue. Like, bro, you're, you're it's rocking like, a sacred. Uh, a man of taste as well. <laughs> yes, that, that dude has some nice taste. But all right, let's continue with. Uh, I think I watched you stream one time and someone killed you with that, and you checked it out, and it was like a rapid hit kill clip. <laughs> Oh yeah, it was salty. <laughs> yeah, I think it was rapid hit kill clip with a range masterwork, and nice. I was just like, and I think he had high caliber rounds. Oh wow! Which is literally a god roll. I'm just like, and that's what I've been trying to get, <laughs> and I can't. But yeah, still, I have my rapid hit head seeker with range finder or with range masterwork and high caliber rounds. So mm. I'm still. Still sitting pretty. Um, really, uh, yeah, well, not a whole lot else. Lots, not a whole else in this twelve. My words are broken. Uh, yeah, it's just basically some issues with uh, silver, Xbox? negative silver balance in on yeah. the Xbox. Uh, in the uh, Valley Crimson Days emblem. Uh, so yeah, some people reported they couldn't get their emblem, uh, even though they still had time to redeem the code and get the the emblem. Uh, so we're going to fix that. Current known issues, full him and desecration stacks are being removed from players' inventories upon earning the final one. Uh, I completely forgot about the full him of desecration. Yeah, same. <laughs> uh, world chests in the Dreamy City are not dropping glimmer. That sucks. Uh. And Aeon safe gauntlets, because everyone uses those, uh, lists yep. the incorrect requirement to activate the Aeon <laughs> energy perk in the armor inspection screen. Players need to get melee kills to activate the Aeon energy perk. It's like um, the one exotic I've never used. <laughs> really? Yeah. No. Um, then I think that's about it. I mean, DMG has a nice little thing at the end. What's he got over here? Um. Alright, I'm still having 
a bit of trouble processing the fact that you all raised billions of Fractaline in the past few week or last few weeks. On top of that, you've completed countless time loss weapon bounties in the process. This is funny because we joke about this a few times in the uh, Twa. Spider is swimming in your shards, <laughs> and your XP gains are overflowing. I can only hope one day own a successful business like our fallen friend. And they're, they're making too many hints of a potential of like we're, you know, we're ga- giving the spider an army. We're giving him, you know, resources to build an army. Um, while all this is ha- has been happening, Osiris mm-hmm. confronted an old ally to provoke them to pick up pick a side. Have you seen the new cinematic in the game, which we talked about earlier? It's out there in the weeks to come. Your victory over the Red Legion on Mercury will be complete. A new season is on a rapid approach, and with it comes new mysteries, threats, and activities to plunder for rewards. If you're enjoying those obelisks, you still have time to farm their resources, levels, and weapon bounties before the next season begins. We'll share more with you real soon. I'm assuming probably next week we'll get a little bit more information on maybe some like armor changes, maybe ability changes, and that's when we'll get a uh, like a date for a live stream. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so questions. Uh, can you pull them up? I think I dropped yeah. my phone. Yeah. If it loads. If it loads. Alright, there we go. Uh... Alright, so... Alright, Carr asks, maybe expectations and hopes for the sword reworks, as in how they're going to play, how good they'll be. Um... Honestly, I don't... I... Hopefully they're just... Usable. I mean, I mean, my kind of concerns with the potential with the heavy attack being a charge, potentially affecting Crucible in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'll see. Interesting to see on how that affects because, like, if it's just a charge rate and you can constantly have one swing of a heavy sword, um, especially what's the uh the sword that has the uh the exotic sword that shoots uh, out. Uh, I know the shape of it. I just don't know the name of it. The shape of it's a sword. You're talking about the exotic uh, sword that makes you fly, right? No, 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 no. It shoots oh. the. Uh, oh, black talon. Yeah, black talon. Okay. I mean, you, that could become a meta. Oh shit! Hardcore. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> and crucible, especially depending on that charge. So yeah, interesting to see on how that really affects um i think it will also potentially could hurt speed running i don't follow enough of the speed running community but yeah, a lot i know of they speed were runners were pretty disappointed about the changes um definitely could affect cheese and riven oh it potentially absolutely will. yeah it will. so we gotta learn how to do it properly now. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, so, I don't know, Gallahorn destroys it. If Gallahorn, G-Baby, makes a return. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, I'm interested to see. I think it was a change that was kind of, like, needed. Um, just because swords are literally useless in the community right now. Unless you are a speedrunner trying to get from point A to point B really fast. And that's about it. And that's probably... A one percent of the community. So, I don't know. What are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I don't. I don't think uh, the changes are for the good. I think it's gonna hurt swords again, unless it's again if it gets if it's broken in PvP with the whole charge thing. Uh, I don't see anyone using them still. Yeah. It all depends yeah, on how fast that charge for the heavy attack recharges. Yep. That's my biggest concern is that's a heavy the whole, attack. That's the whole... That's what it all depends on right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Water asks, uh, future predictions of Destiny as a franchise and how things such as inventories getting deleted and such may have helped or hurt them as a company. 
Um, I'll let you go first. <laughs> uh, so I think in business, you really do have a lot of people that are, I don't want to, I want to say fence sitter, but that's probably not the right term, but like someone who's a casual, um, person in your product. And if one or two things go bad, they'll leave your product because they're fickle. And so I think they might have lost a few people with this whole thing, uh, with losing your uh, inventory and your currencies. Um, especially for people in Europe. I don't think a lot of people like here were that affected because uh, it usually happened during the... Uh, the day anyways and then he came home and it was almost fixed if not already fixed uh so yeah i think that was a bit of a blow for them there uh but what else <sighs> predictions of destiny as a franchise i think you talked about a little bit about this uh before in our other shows but like you and me think bungie wants this to be their wow and have it be their like their one game that rakes in a lot of money while they do other stuff like publishing games and Mm -hmm. working on some other things. Um, I do think there's, there's going to be a destiny three eventually later on just because they need something that's, I feel like this. And I think we need a re we need a reset. Yeah. I think it's just because of the engine, honestly, and the way that it's been structured (laughs) really in the back end. Um, Uh, It sounds like it's a bit of a hassle to try and get things done. Uh, yes and no. I mean, it's definitely, I think, a lot better compared to D1. Because back in D1, I I don't ever remember them literally shutting something off. Where in this one, like, if it's broken, like, Telesto, like, they can just, like, literally Mm -hmm. disable it. And I don't really remember that happening in D1. I think they they might have had... quite a bit with some exotics as well, like Worm, God's Crest. Yeah. Uh, I think that's still disabled? I'm not even sure. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's wild, Um, man. I don't really remember them doing anything. I remember when Vex Mythoclast got out there, that was broken, and I'm pretty sure they did, like, a quick hot fix, but it wasn't disabled. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do agree with you. I think, I don't know when, but I think we will see a destiny three. I think we kind of need just honestly, I think our inventories do need to be wiped like completely. Like just, we need it. We we all kind of need a, like a reset. Now, the issue will be is how are they going to present that? Because obviously they can't come back and be like, oh, the tower got blown up again. Well, okay, that's stupid. That was already used. Um, We (laughs) talked about that. I think it was the week of, the week after the quarters of time when we talked about how, um, how that was like our, our grave. I could see them potentially killing off our guardian and D2, and then D3, a new, like, we become new guardians, like, wow, like, you know, kind of like, just like, you know, Jedis, like, we have, like, that's bold, man, that's a bold decision to do, it is, but, like, I mean, that would, I mean, unless they can come up with another way of, like, explaining why all of our loot is gone. It's kind of like, like a Borderlands where they get rid of the... Like, you play the original cast, but then they come back later on and... Yeah. But yeah, just killing them off entirely is... That's bold. Like, because, I mean, that's what that was. I mean, that was our grave. So, like, I feel like that would be something... And, like, it would really suck and be... And I think, like, a lot of... Maybe a lot of people could be upset because there are a lot of people that are really, like... Uh, attached to their guardians that they've created. Um, I always hate I, the way my guardian looks. Like well, I, I'm, I'm never I'm never character satisfied. creating selection yeah. is horrible. It's but, bad. Um. So I feel like that would be like one of the the best ways for them to do a reset because I don't <clears> know how else you would explain 
doing a reset and us losing all of our inventory again. So, but I'm sure they have multiple writers coming up with a bunch of different ways, but I think that would be a really good way to end Destiny 2 with our Guardians saving, you know, the last city, but we had to sacrifice ourselves. And that's, you know, know, how it leads into Destiny 3, but... I don't don't think that's... I I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen, but I'm just... I don't think it's going to happen, and I don't think it's satisfying for me, at least. Like, Really? Yeah. I like having so, a character that I've been... Like, I've been with this character for, like, three years now. Oh, I mean, there's people that's been with it for five, six years. Six, yeah. And, so, I don't know. But, we'll see. But they're, they're going to have to come up with a really good idea for all of our items being wiped out if they come out with Destiny 3 because we're going to lose everything when Destiny 3 comes out. Yeah, and I kind of... I said this not here, but like years ago back when they uh, were moving from D1 to D2, like I hope that they would have something like carry something over give you like a veteran's reward, but I guess they didn't do that at all, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. They did? I can't... Yeah, it was uh, an emblem. I think you had a complete... It was basically like moments of triumphs. Mm. And I think if you completed that, you got like an emblem and a shader, I think. I can't remember now. It was like the launch of Destiny 2. Yeah. So they did do something. I, I can't remember what. Okay. Um, but if they're going to do that, they need to like have some kind of veteran rewards there. That's just not as better than just an emblem or a shader. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then for the inventories getting deleted... uh. I, I don't know. I, it's, that was kind of like a head scratcher with the whole thing. Um, mm-hmm. I wonder if it has something because I feel like we're seeing a lot of just hot fixes and updates because we were talked about how the seasonal content was supposed to be easier on the developing team mm-hmm. on how it's done. Yeah, but it feels like that they're putting out more and more updates throughout the months. So I feel like, and when you're doing updates, that causes a potential bugs because you're changing coding. So I feel like it could would almost be easier to go back to the old method and releasing everything at launch instead of doing a stagger release like they're doing. Yeah. But I don't know anything about development. I just feel like that's what the issue is, is when they're doing they're putting out new content and that's when we have we had this just really weird bug and that is coding unfortunately so uh, um next question from demandred is rasputin good or bad i'll say he's neutral he's neither good or that's, bad but i would not that's trust how him that's how i feel that's how yeah. i am yeah like i don't think he, yeah same i think he's just neutral but again i would not trust him at all so I think we might have, and then also Nin- Ninja said, Ninja. "Yeah, I guess I read over that, but no, wait, never mind." Uh, the Ninja said, "Should trials be power level, uh, based on power level, and if so, should it include the artifact level?" Uh, it should be definitely based off of power level. Um, artifact should be disabled for trials, but power have- level should one hundred percent be included in trials. I have no problem with that. So, honestly, I think at this point, I wish <clears throat> Artifact would just be disabled in general. But I think it was a cool idea that they brought Artifact. It It's really cool to kind of always be chasing something, like, in terms of, like, another increase. But, yeah, it it does affect it Iron Banner. It makes PvE a lot easier. Just <laughs> It does. It does. Yeah. So, so unless they do readjust things if every season we see a power increase to nightfalls in which we kind of are we're getting a new nightfall so that's kind of cool yeah, I so about i would a while back. so um but now we're officially getting one so they must be listening to the podcast <clears throat> um <laughs> but so if they're gonna make things 
increase the power of things. Like for every season, maybe they increase, you know, Garden of Salvation by a plus 10 or whatever the new activity will be. Plus 10 instead of keeping it 950 or 940 as recommended. I would be okay. Now granted, I do know there's a lot of Guardians out there that aren't at the minimum. But, or have a hard mode or contest mode. Give us something that can be challenging because, yeah, Garden can be pretty easy. I mean, we ran through Garden last night, what, in an hour? Yeah. And, like... I think my fastest hit, time was, like, 45 minutes or 50 minutes. And that wasn't, like, our typically... Because, I mean, we had a good raid group. I mean, yep. a lot of those guys are, you know, definitely getting more and more comfortable running it. But it, it wasn't, like, it at least, our, like, what, six times now, something like that? Yeah, but it wasn't, like, our typical... Because, I mean, yeah, it comes down to it, like... Yeah, raid group, but it's, like, you know, people we've been helping out. Yeah, yep. And it just comes down to is raids are a big thing <clears throat> with chemistry. Um, yep. I think that's what comes down to now with Worlds First is you need to have really good chemistry with your raid team mm-hmm. if you really want to compete. It's not necessarily about being the best. It's just about having good chemistry with your team. <laughs> so. Uh, I mean, Demandred <sighs> asks, shouldn't Twab be out by now? Yeah, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's right out. There. And then Water asks, <laughs> should I even read this? Nah, pass on it. Okay, I'm going to pass on it. And <laughs> that's it. All right. So, Sully, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitch, Mixer, Twitter, and Instagram at Sully underscore underscore games. And you can find me, your host, Thomas, on Twitter, CSG Thomas. I'm also on Twitch as Kane Play Stuff. You can check out my vlog on YouTube under Kane Play Stuff. That's my YouTube channel. We're all here at charshot.com for audio, video, and written content. Uh, please review us on iTunes, Stitcher, anywhere you get your podcast. Five stars is preferred. Uh, leave a review. I'll read it on the show if it's related to Voices of the Vanguard. And uh, until then, guys, eyes down, Guardians. All right.